Hello everyone, welcome to my show. This is Nina MD, right here in Beverly Hills, Fusion of Science and Beauty. And I have a guest that is very, very amazing. Uh, today, as you know, the concept of my show is to bring about the credibility in anti-aging, regenerative medicine, functional and integrative medicine. And we have so many tests that we do in integrative medicine. And sometimes conventional medicines do blood tests, but the way integrative doctors interpret them can be extremely, extremely uh, different. And sometimes we need teachers to tell us, we need nutritional chemists to kind of help us try to interpret those tests. So they're not treating, they're not providing any diagnosis, they're simply looking at the chemistry and helping us to try to interpret those tests. So I want to make it clear that my guest in no way he's going to be trying to treat or diagnose but rather he's an, a phenomenal nutritional chemist that has been I think over 20 years of experience and he's going to talk about how to look at blood tests that are conventional maybe with a little different so to speak eye. So Donald Singh welcome yeah. to my show I'm so happy to have you. I met you at one of the conferences and you mesmerized me because I'm a nutritional uh, and a biochemical sort of a nerd but you mesmerized me because you knew just we just got to talking about you know what well look at about how this a little blood test or this thing and you just knew so much well I'm looking forward to helping you out uh, as she said my name's Don Singh I have been looking at blood chemistry lab reports for 20 years, about 6,000 uh, a year for 20 years. That's a lot. And uh, just seen an awful lot of stuff. And we try to help doctors help their patients try to fix general metabolic problems. But today we're going to talk about health priorities. There are about eight of them that absolutely have to be resolved and managed before you can fix really anything else. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk about a few of them today. I'm just going to summarize them, and then hopefully we'll be able to dig into these a little more deeply as we go along. Uh -huh. um, the first one I want to talk about is intestinal permeability. That's leaky gut syndrome. A lot uh, of people don't even, you know, haven't even heard of that, right, in conventional uh, medicine? No, in about the last five years, it's really taken off and caught on, and people have realized that this is an issue that just is out there, it's rampant, they're not having it taken care of, and if you do have leaky gut, you're not going to be able to resolve any uh, metabolic issues until that is fixed. Right. Um, if the client has leaky gut, you just can't fix anything, except maybe blood sugar and digestion. Um, the causes of this include allergies, gluten sensitivity, drugs, meds, alcohol, heavy metals, stress, poor diet, and uh, viral issues. Uh, so really what is leaky gut? Leaky gut is when your intestinal epithelium, it's a tube that runs through your body mm -hmm. and it's a barrier between uh, outside antigens and toxins that you ingest, keep it from going into your bloodstream and causing issues. Yeah. They're the tight then, junctions sort of start to like loosen up. Exactly. Yeah. The, the, the junctions fall apart and then easy access for these antigens then occur, they get into your bloodstream. Particularly like the larger molecules like the milk protein and the wheat protein, that's how these allergies develop. A absolutely, otherwise they would normally just pass through your digestive system and you wouldn't have an issue with them at all. Right. Uh, but since, as Dr. Nina says, the, infra the particles pass into the bloodstream, your immune system recognizes these as something that's not supposed to be there Yep. and they attack it and there's generally all kinds of immune issues that develop including autoimmunity which we'll talk about quite a bit later. Uh, other issues are celiac disease, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's, uh, asthma, liver, eczema, toxic accumulation, all of these things occur and unless it's resolved no matter how talented the physician is that's helping you you're not going to be able to touch those. Yep. Um, I agree. Common symptoms that are frequently unresolved uh, 
with traditional alternative and medical healthcare support include increasing frequency and unpredictability of food reactions, yeah. aches, pains, and swelling throughout the body, unpredictable abdominal swelling, Frequent. Yeah, isn't that a, is always a, a complaint? Every, every, uh, so many of my patients will complain about abdominal bloating and not realizing that a lot of it could be just because of just this inflammation in the gut that's just, you know, happening. It, it really is. And one of the problems with uh, leaky gut mm -hmm. is the intestinal epithelium doesn't really have pain receptors. And frequently they cannot feel the pain. Yeah. They have outlying symptoms, but yeah. they don't feel the pain in the gut where the problem is. And yeah. of course, Dr. Nine is an expert at assessing and repairing intestinal permeability and has supplemental and dietary modifications that can really help resolve this issue. So, you know, another topic, which I think so many people uh, would love to have information on is environmental sensitivities. Absolutely, uh, doctor. This has been overlooked until recently. And common products that we use every day and are yeah. part of our normal environment Many people are sensitive to them. Others don't have a problem with it. Yeah, but, but you know, we put about, a woman puts at least over 150 chemicals on her body in a day. Men, of course, a little less, but can you imagine the environmental, I mean, just look at the chemicals that we're putting every day. Some people don't have any problem with any of the chemicals. Other yeah. people have problems with specific chemicals that just beat them up and they have no chance of having optimum health. It's as easy as somebody snuggling up to a comforter at night with a fire retardant chemical on it that would be drastic for them, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't affect you and it wouldn't affect me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are tests, specific tests that can detail exactly what those problems are. Um, you know, some of these multiple sensitivities would include uh, constant skin outbreaks, sensitivities to like smells. Like rashes, right? Rashes and just yes, unexplained yeah. rashes. A absolutely. It, it uh, definitely will. Uh, I had a doctor from North Carolina call me, mm -hmm. send me a metabolic assessment form on their family members. All four of them had tremendous issues. And I called them up and I said, look, there's something in their environment that's messing them up. She said they just bought a new house. And it turned out to be the fire retardant chemicals in the sofa. Oh, and as soon goodness. as they identified and eliminated the antigen, everything came along really good and they didn't have any problems after that. Amazing, amazing. Um, so, uh, you know, there's another issue if you'd like to go right into it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are various types of anemias. Yes. You know, we're talking about uh, iron anemia is one, but there's B12 anemia, there's cytoblastic anemia, every kind of anemia you could imagine. Uh, the issue though, if you have any of these anemias, particularly iron anemia, mm -hmm. you're not going to have any chance of maintaining good health. Uh, because the hemoglobin molecule, for example, that carries oxygen uh, to the cells, uh, to the mitochondria, mm -hmm. where the mitochondria use it to make ATP, which is the your power energy. energy yeah, it's fuel. energy fuel. Right. And if you're not able to do that, you're not going to be able to resolve any metabolic issues, yeah. uh, particularly infections. But it's just a crowd stopper. If you cannot fix the iron anemia, you really don't have a chance of resolving issues and bringing people back to uh, normal health. Yeah, yeah. So anemia is a big one, I know. So we've done leaky gut, we've done environmental sensitivities, we've done anemia. What's the next one? Well, uh, stabilizing blood sugar is exactly. critical. Exactly. That is like a diabetes is in epidemic proportions right now. Uh, yeah, but it starts out worse than that. Uh, and uh, if you do not have your blood sugar issues resolved, all of your other organ systems are forced to try to make up for it. So your other organ systems are stressed and really everything just goes downhill. Uh, now, Dr. Nina mentioned, of course, uh, diabetes and it's rampant in our society. And I've heard doctors and politicians say that this is ultimately going to bankrupt the the country. That you know, and cancer. Dealing with that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, <yeah>, also. <laughs> uh, but uh, there's really, it, it kind of all starts with hypoglycemia. Yeah. And uh, hypoglycemia, the main symptom is being lightheaded or irritable if meals are missed. If that's the case, your adrenals kick in, the thyroid kicks in, and you just have a cascade of issues that develop. Mm -hmm. Well, it kind of starts out as hypoglycemia, but then it goes quickly 
into insulin resistance, which is uh, the condition that occurs before diabetes. Meaning that the insulin receptors, they just don't, they become insensitized. They do, they're just not sensitized, right? That's yeah. right. And yeah. the, the main symptom for insulin resistance actually is fatigue after meals. So if you have fatigue after meals, you'd want to call Dr. Nina and have her give you appropriate supplementation and dietary modifications to stop that in its tracks. Now, interestingly enough, I've seen over the years a lot of people that have mixed symptoms. They, their lightheaded and irritable meals are missed, yeah. but they also have fatigue after meals. So what do you do with that? Well, generally what alternative practitioners are doing now is they'll give them a supplement for the low blood sugar between mm -hmm. meals to stop the irritable and lightheaded symptom, but then after meals immediately give them a different supplement to stop the fatigue after meals and adjusting and experimenting with the serving quantities of both of these products in order to stabilize your glucose. Because as I've said several times already, if you have glucose issues, everything just goes downhill from there. Yep, you're absolutely right. Yep, what's the next one? Well, if we have time, I'd uh, love to talk about the immune system. Yeah. Once again, if the immune system is giving you problems, you really can't get anything done either. A uh, dysfunctional immune system can affect the ability to attain normal health. Uh, their viral, bacterial, candida, and parasites uh, can all be problems for you. Fortunately, this is very, these are very easy to identify with a laboratory report. Yeah. So send your lab report to Dr. Nina and we will uh, take a look at this and figure out exactly what kind of issues you have in conjunction with the issues that I previously talked about. But isn't the immune, you know, the immune system is also, I mean, it's, it's in epidemic proportions. We are, we're, if you really see, um, you know, so much of our just environmental and what we go through on a daily basis, our stress levels, the environmental exposures, all contributes to a weakening immune system. You well, know? this is absolutely true. And if you do have leaky gut, getting back to that. Yeah, that's also, you got, uh, what oh. is it, 60% of the immune system is in the gut, right? Yes, Call the gut-associated uh, lymphoid tissue, GALT, yeah. That, that is true. And uh, if you have intestinal permeability, you eat bacteria and every, every piece of food you eat has some I bacteria know, in I it. Know. If you have a, uh, an immune system that's, that's strong, it's not going to be a problem. But if you do have leaky gut, the bacteria or the viruses or the candida, anything in the food you eat spills right into the bloodstream. Yeah. Your immune system then attacks it and it usually revs it up to the point where it not only attacks these antigens, it'll also start attacking organ systems. Mm -hmm. So leaky gut once again is a trigger for autoimmunity yeah. and I hope we have some time to talk about no, that. No, we absolutely, we're going to talk about it after point. this break because so what is the, I know Biotics is an amazing company that you're associated with um, and, and they can find you, how do, how do people look you up? Uh, probably the easiest way would just be to email me and the easiest one would be singsurfer at roadrunner.com. Okay, you know that's, that's you, I just want the audience to know this is an amazing nutritional chemist who has done what, about 6,000, interpreted about 6,000 uh, blood tests in, in, every year for the last 20 years. So we're going to take a break. We're going to be back because this is a very interesting topic. He's touching on, on aspects of our health that are very, very important for you guys to know. So I'm going to be right back. Nina MD, Fusion of Science and Beauty, right here in Beverly Hills. Welcome back, everyone. This is Nina MD right here in Beverly Hills, Fusion of Science and Beauty. And I'm here with Don Singh, he's a nutritional chemist. We've touched on very, very important topics uh, regarding our health and sometimes things that we just don't normally hear about. So Don, welcome back to the show. And uh, Thanks, Dr. Nina. You know, and we've been talking about environmental sensitivities, leaky gut. We've talked about um, you know, some of the uh, blood sugar imbalances. We were just getting into the immune system. And if you could just let the audience know, why is it, I mean, our immune systems are under siege right now. And, and we have so many things that are coming up, especially autoimmune. So just touch on that in terms of how you've seen it as a nutritional chemist. 
you know. Well, I'll, I'll do that. Autoimmunity is rampant. Uh, you'd be shocked at how much of it's out there. Uh -huh. And there's usually a trigger for autoimmunity. Uh, leaky gut is, of course, one of the triggers because, as I mentioned previously, uh, once the junctions between the cells and the epithelium widen, uh, bacteria, all kinds of things pass through. Mm -hmm. Well, your immune system is set up to attack anything that is not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. And when it recognizes things that aren't there, it goes into an attack mode. Uh, usually it revs it up so hard that it not only attacks whatever's in front of it, but it attacks other organ systems as well. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely and right. This is, this is where autoimmunity yeah. Uh, is created and it starts. Um, Basically, you got antibodies of your to your own things. You know, yeah, it's your own antibodies build up. That's right. Your immune system needs to discriminate between self and non-self. Yeah. And uh, when it does get the non-self issues in there, it attacks it. Antibodies are created, and then autoimmune conditions just run rampant. Now, everybody's heard of autoimmune thyroid. Yes. But the other organ systems are attacked as well. Uh, autoimmune diabetes, type 1, is everywhere. We have you're, rheumatoid you're, arthritis. Right, multiple sclerosis. Uh, then, yeah. these, these are all autoimmune. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, we have then the, all these, you know, as, as our hormones decline, the risk of autoimmunity uh, in, uh, diseases increases even further. So we, we now, we have very, a lot of, uh, you know, women in their menopause years will suddenly develop an autoimmune disease such as lupus or Sjogren's or, you know, all of these variety of diseases. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the challenge for practitioners is to find the trigger. Yes. Now there's a lot of triggers. Uh, leaky gut is one trigger. Yeah. I see uh, estrogen as being another trigger. I've looked at so many lab reports on 15-year-old girls that their MDs have put them on birth control pills to balance out their hormones. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, a small percentage of people out there are sensitive to estrogen and it causes an autoimmune attack. I see it in hormone replacement therapy in older ladies as well. So there's a lot of triggers that you really have to uh, find, you have to find out what they are, and then go ahead and get after it. Now, there's a lot of controversy involved in uh, managing autoimmunity. Mm -hmm. uh, some MDs think that, well, and they were taught in medical school, that if the thyroid po antibodies are positive, the thyroid is under attack, it's going to yes. die. Yes. When that happens, you're going to need Synthroid or Level or Armor. Yes. So if you're going to need it then, They'll just give it to you right now. Well, there's a school of thought that the autoimmune thyroids are not a thyroid condition at all. They are, in fact, an immune condition. So what they would like to do is balance the immune system. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a couple of schools of thought on that. Yes, Some doctors right. think that you just keep ordering the antibodies and wait till the antibodies get down to a, a low negative level, and then you got it fixed. Well, unfortunately, the antibodies fluctuate greatly yeah, daily, yeah. depending upon if they're under attack that day. So uh, another way to do it would be to order a lymphocyte subset panel, which is a CD4, CD8 ratio. Mm -hmm. uh, the CD4s are the helpers. They tag the cells for destruction. The CD8s are the suppressors. They keep it under control. Right. Uh, and by that test, you can see a 30-day window on immune system balance instead of, is the thyroid being attacked today? Yeah, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. What's the next, what's the next one? That, that uh, a health condition that well, we... Well, es we, essential fatty acid metabolism. I know. Is, Why, we are in, we are the American diet. You know, as we know, omega-3s are beneficial. Omega-6s can actually lead to more inflammation and that imbalance can, where we're skewed. The, the American diet has more six than threes. So as a result, we're skewed Kind of like the opposite of what we should be, and therefore we perpetuate the inflammation in our bodies. Well, that's correct, Dr. So, Nina. And that's why there's been such a push to say, okay, take fish oils or take chia seeds that have the omega-3s and all that. But, but you know, there's, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than just, just replenishing, you know? Well, that's true. Uh, the first thing you have to do is determine whether or not you have enough essential fatty acids to function properly.
Yeah. Uh, low cholesterol is an obvious flag for an essential fatty acid metabolism problem because you need cholesterol to make steroid hormones. Yeah. Uh, you'll see... That's the starting point of all your hormones, It right? really yeah. is. You know, you have to have the cholesterol. And by looking at a lab report on cholesterol, uh, it's controversial there too, but most people think if your cholesterol is below 140, you're not going to have enough raw materials to make the steroid hormones. This causes uh, hormonal issues with women and uh, mm -hmm. menopausal issues. Uh, and it ha affects libido in gentlemen. Yeah. But uh, once you have an idea, are you deficient, then Dr. Nina will know the blend between omega-3s and omega-6s to make sure that you're getting the right balance that you need for optimal hormone production and everything else in steroid hormone production, everything else that goes along with that deficiency. Oh, you're absolutely right. And. Um and what do you? What's the next one that you think? Well, uh, the last, you know, there's. The I, I know one, we. Mm -hmm. We've done about seven of them so far, and these are all pretty critical. If if they're not working properly, you don't have a chance, and that gets us to the last one. But I don't think you can call it the last one because it has to do with the liver. Yeah. It has to do with hepatic detoxification. And and, and you know, when we look at blood chemistry. And you'll like, let's say a pay, we check liver function tests and, and, and so many of my patients, oh, my liver function tests are normal. Everything's great, you know, and, 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 but people don't understand that that's when cell death occurs, the enzymes of the liver leak out and then they go into the bloodstream and that's known as, uh, then, you know, that's known as a, as a way that you say, okay, my liver function tests are elevated. But if there's no cell death going on, the liver function tests are normal, it doesn't tell you anything about how you're detoxifying. Right? No, it doesn't tell you anything about how well your phase one, your phase two, and now we have also phase three and so forth. But it doesn't tell you how your pathways of your detoxification pathways are working. Well, that's true. Yeah. Uh, Biotics has a wonderful uh, detoxification program. Uh, and I know Dr. Nina has her own. But one thing about the liver... Well, I use, I use a, a, a large portion of the uh, biotics because the, it you know, addresses the phase one, phase two. You have to address all of that, you know. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, liver function is critical to maintaining good health. Yes. Uh, they make hormones and also eliminate toxins. And if the patient cannot convert antigenic compounds from fat soluble to water soluble, you just sim can't, simply can't clear them out of your system. Yeah. So Dr. Nina can tell you what you need to do to convert them from fat soluble to water soluble. And uh, there are several lab values that suggest that there's a liver issue, uh, but the bottom line is you now just what, have to what fix it. What would be on the lab value? What have you seen? Well, in the, the, be lab, the best one. Yeah. Well, the best one is ALT. Now there's three enzymes. There's ALT, SG, or, S, or SGOT, mm -hmm. GGTP. Mm -hmm. Well, those are erroneously called the liver enzymes. Uh, the only one that's really a liver enzyme is the ALT. Mm -hmm. Uh, the AST is primarily related to heart, and the GGT is primarily related to the gallbladder and the biliary that's health. Right. And the thing that's interesting about that is they're almost all related because the highest one of any of those three tests will drag the others up with it. But the one that is the highest is usually where you can assume that the problem is occurring. Yeah. If your GGT is high, probably liver and gallbladder. If you get a GGT over 100, uh, then you're probably going to want to send them out for x-rays or ultrasounds to rule out gallstones. Uh, they may need, need something else. Well, but you know, it's, it's just so, the, the whole point of the, the discussion today is, is that the, just simple blood chemistry can give us some indications about these kind of imbalances. We really talked about imbalances. and. Does anybody go into like a you no, normally? I know we're getting more aware of it as as MDs, but a lot of times if you just go in, no one's really telling us about leaky gut or about our liver. Your liver health may not be good, or you've got a leaky gut, or you've got you know maybe you've got autoimmune. Uh, you know, so it's it's these are what we've discussed today, and or you've got environmental sensitivities. So what we're discussing today are really 
topics that we just need to be thinking about in terms of our health well, that normally are not discussed, correct? Well, that's true. And the ones that we've discussed and basically summarized today are the landmines. These are the things yeah. that have blown up and you really got to fix them. But where, finding where optimal... People, where, where, do, where can they email you? Because I'm sure there's going to be so many out in the audience that's going to want to know, you know, hey, you know, what, uh, what is this nutritional chemistry and, and you know, how can, better can I learn, you know, to ask the doctor to, uh, you know, to interpret my blood test? Yeah, I'll be happy, yeah. happy to help you. Uh, it is singsurfer at roadrunner.com. Now, don't forget that when patients go to see their MD, mm -hmm. with the exception of Dr. Nina and, and a few others, all the MDs are looking for are pathological uh, variations on these labs. They're not right. looking at a tighter functional range, which addresses the symptoms and issues that occur before these landmines blow up. Yeah, we're called optimum values, right? Yes. Nobody uh, under, really understands about optimum values. They don't. Most of them are blood sugar, adrenal and thyroids, infections and anemias also. But if you get to the bottom and you fix the foundations, you don't develop the landmines. Thank you, Don. Thank you. That is the whole topic of discussion is fix the underlying imbalance. And listen, thank you so much for coming on my show. Look at, I mean, just look how time flies when we talk about biochemistry. I can talk all day about so it. So can and, I. <laughs> and anybody so. out there that emails me, we'll be able to talk about it too. <laughs> there you go. Thanks a lot. So listen, you guys, look him up and email to him. And you can hit me up to uh, www.ninamd.com. That's N-A-I-N-A-M-D.com. I will, we both of us are more than happy to answer those questions. So this has been an amazing show. Thank you so much for coming on to my show. I know I'm going to bring you back to talk about more about leaky gut. And I will see you guys next week on 9MD Fusion of Science and Beauty right here in Beverly Hills.